this video we're gonna learn about a pathological function that is a function that has one or more properties that are irregular or that are different to what one would expect and in this case the function we're gonna have to look at is Tomei's function and this function we're gonna call f is defined as zero if x is an irrational number and 1 over q if x is equal to p over q an irreducible rational number what this means is that the mcd between p and q is equal to 1 that is p and q are both co-prime numbers if you don't remember about divisibility then i suggest you go back and check the algebra 1 series so, for example, if we take rational numbers, f, for example, in one half, is equal to one half, f in three over four, is equal to one fourth, and this is the same as f invalidated in one over four. f in thirty, for example. 30 can be written as 30 over 1 so then this would be 1 over 1 which is equal to 1 in general if we take any integer number set then f evaluated in set is equal to 1 if we evaluate f in set plus 1 half then the answer is one half and so on and if we evaluate our function in irrational numbers for example in pi it gives us zero in the square root of two is zero in e is zero and so on for every irrational number the function gives us the value zero and this is what our function looks like. We can see it is symmetrical around one half and that it has many values where the function is zero. This is when we evaluate it in irrational numbers. And so what we have to do with this function is to prove that f is continuous at the irrational numbers, but this continues in the rational numbers. So what we want to prove is that for every epsilon greater to zero there exists a delta positive such that if x minus x zero in absolute value is smaller to delta then f of x minus f of x zero in absolute value is smaller to epsilon and we have to prove that this happens for every x that is irrational number so to prove this we're gonna do it in two steps and the first one is to prove that f is discontinuous in the rational number and the idea to prove this is that we're gonna take a rational number for example 2 over 5 f in 2 over 5 is this number here that gives us 1 over 5 and the idea for the proof will be to look at a very small neighborhood of 2 over 5 that is going to be 2 over 5 minus delta and 2 over 5 plus delta small enough so that when we take a neighborhood around 1 over 5 then the rectangle has no other values for f than zero and so we're gonna use this to say that there is no way we can get to this limit to so 1 over 5 going from the left or from the right because when we look at the values of the function around this point they are all the time zero and so here we have a sham discontinuity and so f cannot be continuous at 2 over 5 
So let's try and prove this, but in a more mathematical way. So what we're gonna do is let x be a rational number, which means that x is of the form p divided by q. And so when x has this form, f of x is equal to 1 over q. So now let epsilon be equal to 1 over 2 times q. And we'll consider the interval 1 over q minus epsilon 1 over q plus epsilon. And this is the interval 1 over 2q and 3 divided by 2q. So clearly, because epsilon is a positive number, 0 does not belong to this interval. But for every delta greater to 0, there exists some number y in the intersection between p over q minus delta, p over q plus delta, and the irrational numbers. This is whenever I'm in a rational number and I move to the left and to the right, I can always find an irrational number. And for this irrational number, f of y is zero. What we're saying is that here, no matter how little I move, there's always an irrational number and f evaluated in this irrational number is zero. So for all delta positive, p over q minus y is smaller to delta. But the absolute value of f in p over q minus f in y, this is the absolute value of 1 over q minus 0. 1 over q is a positive number, so this gives us 1 over q is greater to 1 over 2q. And this is the number I called epsilon. So then, for every delta greater to 0, I was able to find this epsilon equal to 2 over q such that if p over q minus y is smaller to delta, then f of p over q minus f of y is greater to epsilon. And that is the negation of the definition of continuity. So then we know that f is not continuous in the rational numbers. And now the second thing we're gonna prove is that f is continuous in the set of the irrational numbers. So what we're gonna do now is we first take some number epsilon, let's say like this. So this number here is epsilon. And we're gonna have a look at a number here, irrational, so f of the number is 0, and then look at some neighborhood for this number. Let's say something like this. So we can draw these vertical lines and count actually how many numbers we have in this top section, that is when f of the numbers between these red interval are greater to epsilon. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, maybe 13. So approximately 13. Now, if we look at a smaller interval and we do the same, Let's see how many we can count 
here we have one two three four five six seven so when this interval the one in the x-axis is smaller the number of points we are counting for rational numbers gets smaller so what we're gonna ask ourselves is can we make this interval small enough so that there are no rational numbers that is what we're gonna see so as i said first we take an irrational number a and we're gonna take some number epsilon greater to zero and we're going to define n to be the ceiling of 1 over epsilon as n is a ceiling function n is a natural number and 1 over n is smaller than or equal to epsilon now in the interval 0 1 there are a finite number of 1 over q's with q smaller than or equal to n and that is because n is a natural number so the number of positive numbers that are smaller to n is a finite number so now we will consider the interval we're gonna call a and it's going to be a minus q a plus q such that 1 over q is not a number in a so then in a all the rationals we have are 1 over q smaller to 1 over n that is smaller to epsilon now we let delta be a number smaller than or equal to q or positive and we take x such that the absolute value between a minus x is smaller to delta so we have two options if x is an irrational number then f of a minus f of x is equal to 0 minus 0 and this is smaller to epsilon and if x is a rational number then x is of the form p over q and so f of a minus f of x is equal to 0 minus 1 over q this is 1 over q because it's a positive number and because of this because x is an element in a then 1 over q is smaller to 1 over n and 1 over n was selected such that it was smaller than or equal to epsilon so then f is continuous at a and a was just any rational numbers so f is continuous at all the rational numbers the secret here is that the number here of those that are greater to epsilon is a finite number and we still have a few here we have infinitely many here but there is as close as zero as we want for any rational number this is an example of a function that we cannot draw but that is continuous at some set and this has a lot to do with measure theory that is something that you can see in other videos that has to do with the fact that the number of irrational numbers is much greater than the amount of the rational numbers we have in for example the zero one so then the number of discontinuities we have for the rational numbers is very very small 
it's so small that for the irrational numbers it almost doesn't matter because f is still continuous at the irrational numbers. <laughs>